morning, guys. My name's Brad. Grab your Bibles. Let's go through the Word. So we are picking up where we left off in uh, the letter of Philemon. And so we're going to look at verses 8 through 16. So here's what's recorded for us in God's Word. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, Yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I'm sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel, but I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you would, any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. Man, Paul has such a love for the people he ministers to. And just a reminder, Paul is dealing with this topic of forgiveness. This is what Philemon is all about, how we apply that to our lives. And so Onesimus is a runaway slave. Philemon is a wealthy slave owner um, who housed the church, uh, as the beginning of this letter tells us. So Philemon was a brother in Christ and very pivotal to Paul's ministry. And it should be noted, when we think of slave and master in the text of Scripture, that relationship was much different in the first century than what we consider slavery to be uh, and what we've experienced uh, uh, in our country. And so, though that relationship certainly is not applicable to us today, there are principles in Scripture uh, that we see apply to us in regards to the treatment we have of one another. So Onesimus has run away for some reason, and when he came uh, across Paul, he encountered Paul, and he gave his life to Christ. Do you know Onesimus' name means useful? And and notice in verse 11, it says, Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. Paul says, I'm writing on the basis of love. Let me appeal to you that this slave who ran away from you, and whatever that, that, that issue was, just know that Onesimus is now a fellow brother in Christ. And if his name means useful, now he can live up to what his name means in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Paul is sending him back. Paul knows that this is uh, can, could be a very tense situation, but he is appealing to Philemon to recognize what it is that Jesus Christ has done in his life. The, the very transformation that has been brought about in Philemon's own life through Jesus has now taken place in the life of Onesimus. And in verse 16, he says, no longer as a slave, he says, but better than a slave, a dear brother. And he is now a fellow man and a brother in the Lord. And so forgiveness uh, is, is radical in our own lives. And what it does in our heart when we know that we have found forgiveness in Jesus Christ, and now the challenge is, brothers, and this is a challenge for me as minister, it's a challenge for all of us, as we have been forgiven, are we willing also to forgive our fellow man? Because no longer is it slave and master. Yes, they may have those designations in the real world, but both Onesimus and Philemon are now one in Christ. There's an equality there that transcends your occupations and your nationalities. We are Christian first. We are one in Jesus Christ. And being one in him by faith, we have been forgiven by our heavenly Father. And so we continue to pray for the sake of Christ that we, challenged by these words of Paul, um, live out forgiveness day after day. As we have been forgiven, so too we must forgive one another. And so with that in mind, will you bow your heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy word. And though this is a short New Testament letter, We cannot read this without really being challenged and convicted in our hearts because at this very moment, there are circumstances that perhaps we find ourselves in 
where we have to have a forgiving spirit. And that does not mean we waver from the truth. That does not mean we presume upon grace, but Lord, to truly be a forgiving people. Help us. As, 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 as we see this, this reconciliation take place between Onesimus and Philemon, Paul is interceding on their behalf. Lord, we seek uh, that you intercede on our behalf uh, to help us live out the principles of your word, even when it's hard to do. And we do this for your sake. We do this for your glory. We ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time. Remember to like, subscribe, and click that bell.